What's going on all you minties? The Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition. And today I get to bring back one of my favorite segments and I guess it's one of yours too since I've been asked to bring it back. But I guess back by popular demand is the Hidden Gems segment. Today I got five hidden gems to talk about in the graphic novel format. So let's get started. Welcome back everybody. Before getting started, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Share the video. All of that helps with our YouTube algorithm and our channel keep growing. And check out our Patreon and Spreadshop. Great ways to support the channel and thank you so much to our existing patrons for making videos like this possible. So I brought back this segment because it is one of my favorite segments where I get to talk about lesser known books. Now some of you all may have read some of these books, some of you all may hate these books, some of you all may love these books. Regardless, uh, these are the five choices that I had for this particular month. In the comment section, by all means, leave what you think I should add or I should be reading. Uh, sometimes I've read some of the stuff that you all have suggested, sometimes I haven't heard of any other things. Sometimes they're not even translated into the English uh, uh, language, so I have to wait. Or in Spanish, I'll take it in Spanish. So yes, uh, some of these are still in print or available through Comixology, uh, digital format, and then some of them are out of print. But I try to be a little cautious and include at least four in here that are still in print. Or even if they're out of print, they're not that expensive. Again, just my list, but let's go ahead and get started. Kicking off the list this month is The Lighthouse by Paco Roca. This is published by NBM Publishing. It was originally released in Spanish. It's an all-in-one story, and it does have some mature content that I think older teen or mature audiences would really get more out of this. And after reading Wrinkles, I fell in love with it so much, that, and that's one of my hidden gems that I've had on the channel before, that I went and got this particular book. So here we have the Lighthouse. Uh, not to be confused with the movie The Lighthouse, it has nothing to do with that. Sorry William Dafoe, this is completely different. The story here follows Francisco, who is a young man fighting for the Republican Guard during the Spanish Civil War. However, he decides this is not the life he wants to lead, and he deserts, and ends up leaving and becomes injured on the way, and wakes up in an old lighthouse. And this old lighthouse is tended by this gentleman named Telmo. He's the old lighthouse keeper. And it's a really amazing story about these two people that are almost polar opposites. You have Telmo who is without politics, joyful and positive. And then Francisco is very withdrawn. He's He wants to be by himself. He doesn't have any hope for the world. And he's very cynical. The old man kind of reminds me of Ernest Hemingway, and he lives off whatever the waters bring into the seashore. And he sings songs, he uh, quotes a lot of different stories, so much so that he calls Francisco uh, Moby Dick. So throughout this really short book, because I'm serious, it's about 54 pages, the two of them get to know each other. Telmo talks about how even though he's tending the lighthouse, Nobody has come to replace the light bulb at the lighthouse. Uh, and he also tells Francisco of this island that he wants to return to. Now, whether the island is real or not, or what happens at the end, I think it's a really awesome story. I love the relationship between both of them. And, you know, for such a quick read, I got so much out of it. Uh, by the ending, I thought, man, I wanted so, I wanted, I did want more. I wanted a follow up. I wanted to see what happens uh, to certain characters in the story. And I love the artwork. It's so easy to follow. Ro Roca's artwork is so good. And I'm so glad that I got a chance to read this because this is one of those books that I recommend to people that normally aren't into comics. And this is the this is what I mean when I think of the medium that can surpass what we think of comics. I love this book and it's why it's added here on this particular list. Castle Waiting by Linda Medley. Now, this particular book, it's a smaller scale book, kind of like Lighthouse. Uh, this one is printed by Fanagraphics. There's two volumes of this definitive edition, the hardcover edition. Um, and I think this one is more for all ages, maybe um, some 
early teens. So I love fantasy novels ever since I was a kid. Uh, I don't care how old I get. I still love a good fairy tale story with a twist on the tropes. And that's what this is. This to me is an amazing example of fantasy done without the need of a huge epic uh, storyline or a big villain. I, I love fables. You all know I love fables is one of my fa favorite Vertigo books, but this takes a different approach. So this takes place in the world of Sleeping Beauty after Sleeping Beauty is awakened by her prince and they go off into happily ever after. Uh, you know, she wakes up after a hundred years. What the story does is it focuses on the characters that lived in the castle. So Castle Waiting becomes a refuge for travelers and outcasts, whether they're human or anthropomorphic animals or just creatures. Hell, there's even a demon in here from hell that comes uh, from time to time to the castle. So the story kicks off with the tale of Jane, who's a young mother uh, that's about to have a baby and she ends up fleeing a bad marriage. So she makes her way to the castle and through her eyes we're able to meet the characters, the quirky characters, the crazy characters, the characters we don't really trust exactly uh, in the castle. Uh, so we have uh, the bearded nun, a creepily eccentric doctor, a simple but kind servant boy, and an anthropomorphic horse warrior who just, for some reason, the ladies just throw themselves at him. Uh, so. I love the artwork because it has one of this classic fairy tale look to it, but Linda can also just do some really great action sequences too that uh, you will see in the pages of superhero books. So that's one of the reasons why I enjoy this. This is a book I don't hear a lot of people talk about. So this takes your classical fairy tale scenes and just makes them <laughs> into just everyday life. I think that's why I enjoy this the most. Uh, characters are there talking to each other about their problems. Whenever you think there's gonna be something bad that happens, uh, Linda t turns it around on you and you don't expect, because I think you read comics or you see enough TV shows that are loosely based on these fairy tales because these fairy tales to begin with were not the kindest. They were there to teach uh, lessons to kids. Some of them were right down freaking scary um, I know I used to have books when I was a kid uh, reading the original fairy tales. They were not Disney material at all. But anyway, what she does is take those known fairy tales from all over the world and just mixes them all together in this castle. So to summarize Castle Waiting, this is a laid back fairy tale story with some aspects of an epic adventure, uh, but it also shows a slice of life that you don't really see with these type of stories. And I think it also does a really good job of showing that heroism can take many forms and that friendship is stronger than most magic that's out there. That is probably the best way I can summarize this book. I almost said samurais, but that's ridiculous. That's not a real word. Should be. Samurais that. Anyway, uh, yes, Castle Waiting. Available in two hardcovers. I think Volume 1 is out of print, uh, but it's they're they're cheap enough and volume two i think is still in print there was talk of a third volume but i think volume two wraps up the story good enough at least for me next up is creed by trent kanuga this is the omni chronos collection from idw and this one here i think is for teenagers and, and probably teenagers older teens and uh by the way this has nothing to do with the band i'm sorry to disappoint uh, if you didn't enjoy Creed, uh, yeah, not here. This is a book that reminds me of being a teenager, taking a road trip with my friend Wong and running into comic book stores, finding a copy of this comic book called Deadbolt. I think that's what it was called. But the artwork reminded me of Todd McFarlane's Spawn. And I remember my friend uh, Wong, who was with me, saying, hey, man, this is going to be huge. This guy, look at his artwork. And sure enough, we both fell in love with Trent Kanuga. And the next time I saw, it was printed by Hall of Heroes, I want to say. We were in Indiana somewhere because uh, we were taking a road trip to Michigan. Anyway, long story short, I found the comic book in issue number one when it was printed by somebody else. I think it was Lightning Comics or something like that. And I started following the character of Creed because I really enjoyed the, the artwork. The artwork, my friend was right. 100% reminded me of Tom McFarlane's artwork. And it was, it's, it's 
what kept me reading it and my comic book store could not find any of issue two so i had to travel around but anyway that's what trent, like trent canuga's creed reminds me of is that time in my life when i was trying to just expand my horizon of comics and get into independent comics i was 17 years old this was 1994 no, 1995, I think, when I found that issue of Deadbolt. But anyway, the story focuses on Mark Farley, who can travel to another dimension. He's the teenager that you're going to be following. As a matter of fact, Trent was 16 years old. I remember finding that out because I was reading a Wizard Magazine article that he was 16 years old when he started self-publishing this particular book. So he was writing a teenager as a teenager. So that was real. That maybe that's why it spoke to me at the time. That in the cool Junko jeans he was wearing. But anyway, he can travel to this dream world where he is kind of like the master, it, but in reality he's completely powerless. Like, and he is not very well liked by most people. He has a crush on a girl, and he kind of sees her image in this dream world where he's the master. So in this dimension, he does face off against demons from this dark realm uh he's met by dragons in here there's talking trees there's an old man in here that's kind of his guy actually no the, the guide was this little frog yeah that became a dragon anyway so to me it felt like a fantastical book that i followed i didn't i never finished reading it back in i want to say 2007 2008 IDW decided to publish his book, all of it, all of it is in this particular format, but I think there was a Ninja Turtles story that was not collected in here, which is interesting enough because now IDW owns Ninja Turtles, but anyway, um, this just, to me, blends that awesome style of Western comics with manga, and as a teenager, reading it and then finding out that the guy that's writing and drawing this was also a teenager, that blew my mind. Now, when I left comics and came back, uh, right around 2002, 2003, I wanted to see where, where some of the artists that I, were that I was following at one time were, and he was one that, of, of course, I should have seen this coming, but the last thing I saw that he was doing was doing video game development. So I think I saw his name on like some Game Boy games as a concept artist and stuff. So I'm sure... He's still doing video games. I don't know. I haven't. I, I honestly, I was looking through my library trying to pick out five books, and I found this. And I was like, I need to talk about this book because I really enjoyed it. So, Creed, yeah, available from IDW, out of print, but I think it's it's not that bad if you can find it in the third party market. New Warriors, stay with me. I know you're probably wondering why the hell do I have New Warriors in my hidden gems because this particular volume of New Warriors, I never hear anyone talk about. Uh, so this is by Kevin Graval and Paco Medina. They're the two creators behind this, of course, published by Marvel Comics. So this would be volume four of New Warriors. So after the Fabian and Ciesa years, after the relaunch of New Warriors, uh, the second time around, and then Zeb Wells run, which is horrible. But anyway, uh, Civil War happened. So if you know the story of Civil War, a bunch of the superheroes had to sign on with the government with the superhuman registration act now uh this is all all the story that uh kevin graval wrote is available in three of these trade paperbacks and most of them are still pretty pretty easy to get so with three words scarlet witch no more mutants wiped out the mutant population to 198 so only 198 mutants are around so this book to me, felt like a sleeper hit because this was less of a New Warriors book and more of an X-Men book. So a lot of those characters that were depowered through Wanda's big wipeout of mutant population came back in this particular book. They didn't have any power, so they got some power suits and they got some uh, enhancement drugs i guess i almost said pills but that's not what they did anyway to kind of give them power so they could fight crime a lot of surprises uh were in this book and all of them were being led by this new guy that's wearing night thrasher's armor night thrasher in the pages of civil war um you know didn't have a happy ending so we knew that that guy was off the table Dwayne was off the table so who is this new night thrasher so you had ties to the original new warriors as older characters come back and make guest appearances that were once in the new warriors and funny enough this is like i said this is a series that no one talks about uh i know that kevin's um 
what was it the blue marble series another one of my trades i can't find that one gets a lot more love and recognition for what it is and it is a great series but this one yeah hardly ever hear anyone talk about plus you got paco medina i love his artwork so much so that i chose the amazing spider-man omnibus volume 5 standard edition because it has his art on it i think he brings that anime energy into his art and this to me is one of the highlights of his careers and man this story was so good and i hope that you're able to check it out if you're a fan of new warriors or if you're a fan of the x-men this brings it all really i mean it's all in one have i sold it yet i mean it's new warriors baby you all know how i feel about the new warriors but this one to me yeah i i never hear anybody mention on any list and i i just happen to love it i think it's a great story uh this all ages, I think. Yeah, absolutely. All ages. A couple of deaths here and there, but I mean, yeah. Who doesn't see that in comics these days? Last but not least, Heathen by Natasha Alterici. This is published by Vault Comics, and the very first thing I want to mention is the amazing feel of this book. It feels so soft. It is a soft cover, but I love the feel of this book. It's different than the Marvel and DC books or image books, the trade paperbacks. I don't know what it is. Now, there's 12 issues that make up this series. Uh, this is definitely mature content. And it focuses on this young Viking warrior named Adis. And she is exiled from her people for kissing a girl. So that was the crime she committed. So it gets darker than that because it's her dad that has a choice uh, to make. To either kill his daughter for committing this sin or to have her married off and since that's his child he does kind of what the huntsman did in the snow white story yeah sure i killed her but sends her off now she decides to take the next step and go on a journey of almost like self-discovery but more so revenge and it is so good it all starts off with her freeing another valkyrie from being imprisoned by odin's fire he left her uh, in, in this fire for eternity and along the way she's joined by mermaids there's also more valkyries in there uh immortals and the talking horse who is named oh, this is, uh, saga this to me feels more like a manga than any of the books i mentioned today because it's she does everything like Alterici does everything. She does the color. She does the, the story. I think the only thing she doesn't do with the book is the lettering. Um, now, there's three volumes. There's three trade paperbacks. I believe volume three right now is out of print, but they could very well print it back. I was hoping they would do an oversized hardcover collection of this particular story, but uh, nothing yet. At least not that I've heard. Now, to me, this story really reminded me of uh, this one summer which I have nothing in common with the main character, but I loved it. I loved every aspect of this. I loved how good of a soul that Adis is and how badly she wants to do the right thing. I loved every, I loved every moment getting to know her character and all the other characters that show up through here. And the artwork... Oh my gosh, it's so good. It's sketchy. It do, Like I mentioned before, it does remind me of a manga, but it's so expressive and at the same time, it's very beautiful. So that's why I'm recommending Heathen to wrap up this list of hidden gems for this month. Now, some of these books are still available from our sponsors. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They pride themselves on packaging your books so they arrive safely in an excellent condition as well as prompt and helpful service. Check out the bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. CGN is excited to announce that they are now taking pre-orders. They're making it easier for you to ensure that you don't miss out on the hottest releases. CGN is currently running a special promotion for your mentees. If you're a first time customer, let them know that you were referred by near mint condition at the checkout and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. This promotion is valid for U.S. customers only. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with a kind of deep discount and quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. If you live in Europe and are interested in buying and pre-ordering Omnis, then you should definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices for Marvel and DC big books within the EU, flat shipping rates of 990 euro for all EU countries, extremely careful and sturdy packaging, and all emails will be answered within 24 hours. 
They also offer a superb selection of new titles and out-of-print books on their website. Just head over to waltzcomicshop.com for more great deals and rare titles. And for a limited time, you can use the code NEARMINCONDITION, all one word, at the checkout and get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order. Waltz Comic Shop, your reliable source for Omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. And that was my list of hidden gems for the month of August. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of these books, if you hated the books, uh, if you love them, or if you've never heard of them. And if you have any more questions, by all means, please leave those questions down below. And please leave your list of books that you recommend I read. Sometimes, like I said, I've read them. Sometimes I've never heard of the books. Uh, let me know, you know, if they're still available and I'll be happy to read them. Sometimes, sometimes I'll look out and find some amazing stories that you all have suggested. I love that, uh, you know, this community that we've built, like talking to each other about these books that we love so much. Uh, because, and then sometimes, you know, a certain book means something to somebody and somebody else is like, man, that book was just trash. And I, I get it. You know, I get a lot of that on my channel when I recommend something like manga. And speaking of manga, I will be doing uh, Hidden Gems manga. So maybe every other month I'll do something. But I'm trying to bring this back every month. So I'm glad to be talking about these Hidden Gems. This was The Uncanny Omar. Thank you all so much for watching. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Ring that bell for notification. Check out our Patreon and Spreadshop. The description of the video has all the links down there. And more importantly, everyone stay healthy, stay safe, much love.